Loving you, country. Just had to scream at uh, one of my people out there. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. All right. First customer doesn't even acknowledge the sign. He just buys a, a platinum. I have one. I have one employee, and I'm like, "Look, man, we're gonna take care of you." But you see the sign, okay? We're not. We can't even. I'm gonna have to stop the business because there's no one to work. Love my life. Love my family. Hallelujah. Right. Grind it down, uh, Amen. Okay. Good morning, T. Good morning. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. That's good. Yeah. Right. You want to continue in prayer? Dear, we're there. Okay. I see you, my brother. God bless you, sir. You told me, Dar? Dar, you talking to me? That was an answer to Lemuel. But yeah, you want to continue in that prayer? That open prayer. Absolutely. Father God, Lord Jesus, may we bow our heads. Father God, Lord Jesus, our Savior, I want to just thank you for waking us up a beautiful morning this morning. Lord Jesus, Thank you for putting it on my heart when I said I couldn't pray for the for the moment that my kids were still asleep, but they woke right up anyway. And it doesn't even matter. I need to keep you in prayer, keep you first and foremost, find ways to have you in my life constantly, Lord Jesus. I just want to thank you for for being in my heart. I just want to thank you for working the works as I am building the personal relationship with you, Father God, Lord Jesus. I just want to thank you for all of us online wanting to get the word and appreciate the word, work for the word, and walk in the word. Lord Jesus, we all are learning, and I want to continue to, uh, for us all to continue to learn. I want to bless our families. I want to bless the ones out there struggling, that they will find a relationship with you, or even get, we all will bow down to one knee and know you are Lord. God, I just want to thank you for just the experience I've been getting with, with, with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, um, um, there's not a day that goes by that I want to go by and not worship you, Lord Jesus. So I want to thank you for this morning, and I want to learn as much as I can and listen as much as I can in your holy name. Thank you for waking us all up. Let us all have. A fine year for the word this morning and continue to walk in your faith, Lord Jesus. In our in Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. 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 Beautiful prayer. So just so, so so we can all know that, that you know our relationship with Jesus, we gotta get that ourselves. You know what I mean? We can't get a relationship through Jesus through each other. You know what I mean? You make it be about your personal business to get a relationship. See, God got something in his word for you. He got your measure that he want to give to you. And then once you get, you know, once you get your measure from him after your faith increase, then you can bring some new revelation to the table for us. You hear me? A lot of people are stagnant. Because they're not doing what two Philippians, you know, Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You hear me? God got a measure for you. That's why I can go in this word and I can look at it and it might be totally different from somebody in a 10,000 block radius. I dwell with him also, which is of a contrite heart. I ain't never heard that before in my life till the Lord dropped that in my spirit. That was just within a few months ago. And I said, look at this, Lord, I, Lord, go ahead and make it, get you your own relationship with him. And your relationship with him should line up with the other people who got a relationship with him. There is not one in heaven. There is two. When it speaks on one, they're speaking on being on one accord. Remember, when Jesus came, he was the express image of the Father. Meaning, when he came... He came also with the spirit of the Father with him. That's why he was telling his apostle, haven't I been with you so long and you don't recognize you with the Father? Because when you get the other rest of the scriptures, he's been telling you is that he came in the express image of the Father. See, when you talk like that, when you're like that, you can talk like that when the Father is with you. And this is what I want us to get to understand. 
that if you deny Jesus, you say Jesus is the father and the father is Jesus, by default, you are denying one of them. You can't deny the father, nor can you deny Jesus. Each one of those are condemnable. That's why we got to get our own relationship, not through man, but bring yourself to the word so you can get your own relationship. So we're going to look at today seven biblical points. What I mean by this, you can come to this word and you can see if you're lined up in the faith. This ain't to scare nobody. If you think that you're missing out on some of these, you know what to look for. Bring yourself closer to the Lord so you can see. Number one, a man must be a man of the word of God. Let us look at Timothy 4, 13 through 16. And, and I got this put up already. First Timothy 4 at 13 through 16. This is the Apostle Paul talking to a very young Timothy. Till I come, give attendance to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. Look at it a little bit further. Although the Apostle Paul was talking to Timothy, a young Timothy, look at God in this. Until I come, give attendance to reading your word, to encouraging each other, and to the doctrine, to the teachings. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Don't neglect by doing man's will, the gift that is in you. God want to bring that gift out in you, what we was just talking about. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the land of the hands of the Presbyterian. So that gift that's in you was given up by the land of hands of prophecy and by the land of hands of the church. Don't neglect that. A lot of people are neglecting that because they're following man and not bringing themselves to the word so they can get a relationship and follow Jesus. Don't neglect what God is wanting through in you. Meditate upon these things. See, when you get to work to the word and you reading the word, meditate on it. Read a little bit to where you can meditate on what you read. Like I just started Daniel. I read the first chapter, put it down. And I've been just meditating on Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Azariah, Hananiah, and Mishael. Daniel, Belteshazzar, you hear me? I'm just meditating on that verse. Why? Because when you meditate upon these things, give thyself holy unto them. I'm trying to give myself holy to that scripture. I'm trying to see what they were seeing. I'm trying to be where they was at. That thy profiting may appear to all. See, when you make yourself a part of the scripture, people will be able to see that on you. They'll be able to see that in your ways. They'll be able to see that in your character because you made the scripture a part of your life. Making a part of your life. Take heed unto thyself. Watch yourself. Just like we was talking about with Brother Christian earlier. And it's not a bash at you, brother. I love you. I'm always going to be here for you. I remember when I first met you. I always going to remember that. You hear me? Take heed to thyself. Watch yourself so that system, <laughs> that system of work won't drain you for 100 hours a week and you end up doing this agenda and not the agenda that you're supposed to be doing for yourself. Take heed unto thyself and unto the teachings. Continue in them, for in doing so, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Now, I know we got to go to work, but there is a way that we can do things to where we don't have to be stressed out. You know what I mean? We don't have to exert ourselves to the point. We know that the job don't care about us. All they care about is getting their agenda done. But you have to care about you. You know what I mean? You have to care about you. So we got to give ourselves to the word. I'm looking at man must be a man of God. Being a man of God, you got to bring yourself to the word. You got to be willing to get that relationship with Christ yourself. Not through other people, but you bring yourself boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. Let's look at James 5.16. A real man, number two. Man of prayer. Look at 5.16. Confess your faults to one another. A lot of us got things going on. It's okay. Find somebody you can trust. Find somebody you know that's in the Lord that's going to hold what you tell them in confidentiality. James 5.16, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. This is not saying that if you're not righteous that your petition won't be heard, but we know God don't listen to sinners, not sinners that's going on to keep continue sinning in. But look, at so you can availeth much as bring yourself to somebody and confess your sin to somebody that you know is born again. Somebody that's born again is deemed righteous in the eyes of God. And if you have an effectual fervent prayer, it'll righteous much. If you're serious about your prayer, 
It a right it availeth much. It will, it availeth much. Amen. Hallelujah. We see that? We get that? Amen. 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 Anybody anybody want to speak on that so far? Well, you would oh, go ahead, T. Uh, I just want to say, you know, that's true because, you know, last night I got down and I prayed on my knees and I said, God, I don't ever want to not stop listening, learning about you. And it's been getting beautiful, man. I mean, it's been getting beautiful. Like things been happening and right away they apologize right away for this last week. And it's been like. Wow, you know, um, my mom, we I mean, I'll start crying, man. This is it's, it's been a beautiful week, man. So let's stay in the word, let's stay reading, and let's stay praying, and it's gonna be all right. Amen. I remember you yes, sir. down. You can write these down if you want to, just so you can go over them later and remember. Number yeah, one, a man must be a, a, a must be a man of the word of God. So we're claiming ourselves a part of God. We must be a man of the word of God. Number two, a real man of God is a man of prayer. Remember, that's your communication with God. If you're not praying, how are you communicating with him? He let us know right here in Luke 21, 36, that we're going to have to pray so we can make it to stand in front of the Son of Man. So you're going to have to communicate with God in the spiritual realm so all the obstacles that's impeding you, the Lord can fix it in the spiritual realm so that you can jump over those hurdles. Remember, it's by him that's keeping us, not of ourselves. Being a man full of the spirit. That's what we're talking about. Look at John 16, 7 and 9. Nevertheless, this is Jesus speaking. I tell you the truth. He was talking to his apostle. It is expedient, which is beneficial for you that I go away. For if I not go away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and of sin because they do not believe on me. So remember, it ain't us that's working. That's why we say wait on salvation. Because when Jesus Christ sends you the spirit, which is the comforter, it's going to be him that's going to be reproving. It's going to be him that's going to be correcting. Remember we talked about this? Amen. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. Amen. It's going to be, going to be that spirit in you that's going to be talking to the people, reproving them, correcting them. There, you were talking about the meditate. Go ahead, let me go. Oh, anybody else? Okay, you were talking about meditate on the word. Yes, sir. And the other one was prayer. And uh, meditate on the word. You know, I've been uh, listening to the words and um, sure. reading it. But then I said to myself, "Well, where do this fit in my life?" Right, you know. Right. right. Yeah. And right. prayer. Amen. Prayer. Mm -hmm. I know prayer works because <laughs> right. the other day I just had a situation, you know, I prayed about it, prayed, prayed, and then I just said, well, I just going to bring it, just leave it to you, Lord. And then a few hours later, that prayer was answered, you know. Amen, amen. Yes, yeah. 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 We're all going to be tried. We're all going to go through things. It don't matter who you are. We're all going to go through things to, to get us to a place to where we can jump those hurdles. To see where you at. You still letting those same hurdles get to you or are you jumping them by now? So we're all going to go through things. I see you, Brother T. God bless you, brother. You're going to be amazing, man. You're going to be amazing for the kingdom. I already know. I've been around you. I already know what God's doing in your life. You're going to be so amazing. It's, man, it's, we go through things in life, but when God got his hand on you and your brothers and sisters can see that, man, God's going to be so wonderful to you when he give you what he got stored for you. He ain't doing nothing but getting it ready. And it's going to be a blessing, brother. It's going to be a joy. I can't wait to celebrate in that with you like I'm doing now because I can see it and I know it. I know what it looked like because it happened to me. That's why I know what it looked like. Amen. When you get full of the Holy Ghost, when you fall on you, the yeah. only reason why you know somebody's filled with the Holy Ghost is because you had it before. <laughs> the same way when you got it. That's what they mean by the evidence. The evidence is when the Holy Ghost fall on you, you don't see that when that fall out the sky. But when you act a certain way in front of a person who received that, they know what it looked like because it happened to them. That's why the men at Cornelius' house said, man, they received the same gift as we did. Why? Because they looked and seen the magnifying God. They looked and seen them speaking in tongues. 
Amen. Amen. That's how they knew yeah. they received the same gift they received. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. You must be a man full of the spirit. Gotta be. If God ain't operating in you, if you ain't waiting on your salvation and God filled you up with the spirit, remember the spirit is in all and through all. That's the spirit of God. But you must be filled with the Holy Ghost to go to heaven. That means the Father has to draw you to Jesus so you can get filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, you have a sensation in you. Yes, you have the enemy working in your spirit. Yes, you have God who is in all and through all. That's why you can see some people who don't know God, they'll have a reaction off God, the word of God. But that don't make you born again. You have to be filled in Christ. And I'm going to know when you're born again, trust me. Because remember what we just talked about, I received of it. That's how I'm going to know. You're going to be talking about God so much, the world going to be telling you to pipe it down. You hear me? Trust me. Amen. Hallelujah. You must be a man full of the spirit. You must be. That means God has to get into you. Christ Jesus, he's God as well. Remember, John 1. The word is God. The word is Jesus. And the word was with God, meaning God the Father. And all things was made through Jesus. Amen. It was not nothing made that wasn't made. Hallelujah. Let's look at Revelations 12, 11. I'm telling us these things because I'm breaking it down, making it practical so we can see a man must be a man of the word. You must be a real man of God, a man of prayer. A real man of God is a man of prayer, communication, being a man full of the spirit. You have to allow the Holy Ghost in you to operate in you and to be open and share your life and testimony. Let's look at Revelations 12, 11. Therefore, rejoice, ye heavens. Oh, oh, oh sorry, sorry about that. 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. What is the scripture talking about? Before this, the scripture that proceeds, Satan just got kicked out of heaven. He just got kicked out of heaven by Michael and the angel. The Lord let us know in the word that woe ye heavens, woe ye earth, rejoice ye heavens, woe ye earth, woe ye sea. Satan has come down to you. And his wrath is strong. Remember, Satan's spirit, his wrath down here is strong. But look what God gave us. He gave us Jesus. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. So to be open and to share your life testimony. I'm sharing my life testimony when Jesus came in my life. And I overcame Satan by the blood of the lamb, by Jesus Christ and the word of my testimony as I share with you. That day I'm in jail, headed back to the penitentiary, started living a good life, best I ever had in my life. Cried out to Jesus, came down in that cell, and took me to heaven, my spirit. So beautiful, changed me, you hear me? Sharing that with people, letting them know Jesus is real. Amen. People persecuting me, your own family, talking behind your back, but every time they get in the jam, then they want to come holler to you. They want to come cry out to you. Yeah, Amen. but the same person that you talking about is the same person you want to save you, but he will save you. He will save you. Sharing your testimony. That's he exactly what's happening. Sharing your life and sharing your testimony. That's how people are one to Christ. Go ahead, brother T. Go ahead, brother. That's exactly, you know, I've all, you know, for a while I was saying, you know, I like to hear, this is how I want to hear it. But for the last month, I haven't been. I've been in a word. I've been reading one little page, well, about two pages and sitting on it. And then when I open my Bible up, I start right back where I started. And then I read them two pages a lot quicker. And then I go to the next. And, um, you know, people who's not like me, you know, and my family, which we're talking about, you know, now they're calling on me. And I'm opening my, you know, my heart's always been open. I've always been uh, loving and um, I'm, I'm right here for him, you know, um, and it kind of sucks because my brother is, uh, well, I'm here for my brother and sister too. I, I just didn't talk to nobody right. since, you know, things happen lately, um, but I'm opening up now. Um, starting to not be what my mom called it. She called it a uh, avoidance. Avoidance. I've had avoidance um, since my dad passed, man. And uh, you know, um, so I'm trying to fix that now. But it's been cool, man. You know, I see people calling on me. You know, and hey, Tia, 
they looking, man, and it's and, hey, and I'm giving the word because it says in Ezekiel, man, the the blood will be on you if you do not right, right. talk to them about what you know. Right. You know, when he sent him in Israel, you know, you don't you you don't tell him what you don't tell them what you know. The blood's on your hands. So I'm um, hey, reading this word is better than anything in man. It's be, Man, it's better than any movie. Anything is better than any. It's better than all the. It's better than all of the experience you've had in your life because you start to read about the experience that you had in your life and why you had that experience, why you went through that experience in this book. Man. So it's amazing. Yeah, so let's be there. Let's be kind. And it took me a year, you guys, to really get into this book. I didn't. I wasn't getting into the book. I was just listening to like. Dar said, I was listening to man, but I was trying to listen to the best word I can. I was listening to the word, you know, but then I said, okay, now I only can get this through a personal relationship and, and learning it myself. Okay, they can tell me how to fix a bike, but let me know how to fix a bike from the real instructions. We all want the, yeah, so you know, and um, you know, oh man, you know, it's good. Brother Lemuel, you got something you want to say, first? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I must, hey, dear, I must commend you on your uh, outline today because yesterday I was saying, now, how am I going to do this? But I, what I did, I just wrote the scripture down and I can write, read it later. Man, uh, man. But, uh, but what, what T was talking about is about the scripture, reading the scripture. And, you know, I, I listen, I'm just one of those news person, and I listen to the news and what's going on around the world. And it just all adds up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, it adds up. Definitely. And um, and eventually we're just going to have to put our trust in God. That's what I think. That's what we should. Well, we all should. I should go out and witness. But you got to, um, it's going to end up putting our trust in God because, man, it's just not man. saving us. It's, it's not. Man, man, letting us, yeah. Yeah, letting this world down. It's sad to see yeah. but in these times now before it get worse. Because remember, we read the word the other day that God is calling the merciful home so they don't have to endure what the evil that is going to come upon this world. We read that. So evil is coming. Right now, get yourself prepared. Get yourself ready. Don't wait until we get out in the deep end. Now, all of a sudden, we're looking for a life raft. Let's get the life raft now while we're being pushed out towards the water. That way, when we get out there, we can float, right? Amen. We prepare. And just the, one of the things I wanted to tell you, Brother T, when you was talking about Pops, is that when Abraham was first called, he was young in his ministry, but he was hearing that voice of God, and God was using things to strengthen him. As him and his dad and his, his uh, nephew and his brother and them, as they left from the land of Ur, of the, of, of, you know, the land of Ur, the Chaldees, you know, when they got to a city named after his brother named Haran, that was Lot's dad, Haran. He died. But after they got to a city named after Lot's dad, Haran, Terah died. That's Abraham's father. When he died, he was in a grieving state. But you grieve. We do that because we're in the flesh, but you don't stay there. God told him to get up. Get up and leave and continue on. Remember, the one that called you can put bones, can put sinews, which is tendons, and the breath of life back in them individuals and bring them back to life. You hear me? So you continue on, and God is doing the thing. Let God continue to do what he's doing to strengthen you, to bring your other family members along and people around you as well through your testimony, through the light that he's put in you. Go ahead, Brother Christian. You want to speak on that? All I can say is that Every single one of my family members is so disconnected and disillusioned by the ways of the world that they've become lacking in any kind of love towards one another, common courtesy, or any kind of you know reasonable investment in reaching out to just say hi in the most you know easiest way. And that when you're out here in the world, like I am, and I know many many others are, you know. You have to depend on the Lord. You have to lean on the Lord. And at the same time, you know, 
every single day go into the fire and fight, you know, and it's like the craziness of Seattle and everything that I'm dealing with is often it's so profound, man, that you can't even really realize how hard it is on somebody to go back and forth and, and to try to hold it together and to, to be your absolute best without being whittled down and wore down and kind of jaded. And so me personally, I love, I love the saints. I love being up early, but trying to, you know, stretch it out, cook it up, get back and forth, all these things, hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of days now, probably four or 500 days in a row. It's just, uh, and then looking at what's going on, you know, with all of the stuff in the world, it's just, it, what it does is for me personally, it's such a dramatic shift and change from, you know, where we were two years ago with, uh, filthy rags, barbecuing, you know, the change with, with my eyes and the mule's eyes from COVID, the bioweapon, gain of function, Anthony Fauci, Wuhan lab. I can barely see myself in the little, little window right there with you guys. So blurry and heat waved out. And, uh, it's a scary world and we need each other more than ever. And I think that the Lord works through you guys in, in the biggest way, you know, to try to pull us all together and to remind us, man, that, Hey, we're not fighting this fight by ourselves mm -hmm. ever. You know, ever, you know, he's, he's taking care of us in ways that maybe we don't even recognize. But I'm just super, super thankful, man, for you guys. And I apologize. I haven't been able to get on, but it's just been, you know, I have one guy here again and, and we're not slammed. Thankfully, I'm able to get on. But uh, yeah, it's a hard day. It's not sometimes like old Jay-Z said, but at the end of the day, man, you know, when we come together and we magnify the strength and the love that Jesus gives us, you know, through our obedience to him. We're, we are pressed down and overflowing and we, we reach others. I talk to a lot of people every single day about the good things in life and stay focused on, keep eyes on the prize. The heavenly father's taking care of us. You know, yeah. <laughs> I don't like to be stressed out and have crazy, but it's kind of normal these days. <laughs> I love you so much, guys. Thank you for letting me share. Amen. So Thanks remember, to you, Lemuel. So, so remember. Yale's yeah, voice in the wilderness. Yeah. You're all the voice in the wilderness. Amen. We're the light Amen. The we are the light of the world. Remember, as being Christians, you're supposed to be a light of the world. God been showing this all the way since Egypt. Remember when Joseph was second in command down in Egypt? It was a dark place. But when he went to go get his family, remember? And the family, we keep showing that you, you're calling. We keep showing Joseph's calling ended up saving his whole family and brought them down to a land called Goshen. They was the only one that had light. The rest of the world was dark. So remember, when we're of Christ, we should have light. We should have light in this darkness. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that we don't go through things, but through that, we should know our purpose. That is only to strengthen us. God tells us his, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So when we're weak and going through things is when there's a time to, for God to magnify in our life and shine through our members. Amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Amen. yeah. You, amen. Mean, you know, yeah. You should have light, Amen. you know, Amen. and God has showed me light for the last few months, you know. Amen. Yeah, he really has. All right. Remember, some of the things we do while we're in that sinful life, we got to carry with us. Some of the things we're going to carry with us until in the Lord's time and he deliver us from it or he take it away from us. Remember, when we was out there in that life, there's going to be some things we take with us to show our disobedience, right? And God will take that from you at his timing. But until then, those briefs, those things, we bear those things. We come to Christ limping. And when Christ, you know, when he when He get in our life, of course, he'll start the healing process in our life. Of course he will. But some people got wounds from being out there in that life. Some people got scars from being shot and cut and hurt from being out there in, in, in Satan's arms. You know what I mean? So we got a couple, couple minutes right here. So I want to show, let's look at radical boldness. Just a little recap. You must be a man of God. That's the first one. Second one, a real man of God is a man of prayer. You must have communication. Be, number three, being a man full of the spirit. You must partake in the Holy Ghost so God can operate to you through you. To be open, sharing your life testimony. We must be open to share our life, how the blood of the lamb came in our life and delivered us from the grips of Satan's, Satan's grips. Number five is radical boldness. And I titled on the first one, what not to do. 
Jesus was at the Garden of Gethsemane after he prayed. Then he went over to the garden. He crossed over to the brook of Kidron, which is a small stream of water, and he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Here come the Roman Empire, then the Jews, and Judas Iscariot. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant, Malchus, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. And then Jesus said unto Peter, Put up thy sword into thy sheep. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Remember, the fight ain't against flesh and blood, but spiritual in high places. Is it you in your life talking about you need a gun or you need this? No, you need to position yourself more through Christ. That's all. Christ wants to fight your battle. He lets us know if we trust in man, trusting in man not only means his persons, but trusting in his guns that he made, trusting in his knives that he made. Trusting in his money and his, all these soccer riches that he's trying to give you. All that is a part of man. Our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. These spirits that are in high places that have geographical territory. That's why the messenger couldn't get to Daniel, remember? Because the demons was in the way. But after some time, he penetrated it and got through and brought the message to Daniel. Amen.